gouache is a fabulous medium, but it can come with some issues. Here I'm answering your questions about gouache. Can you layer it? Can you varnish it? Can you mix it with acrylic? Can you, mm, well, you have to look at the video to find out all the answers. And I'm painting this gouache portrait while answering your questions. So what about the gouache layers and the background? All right, so for the background here, what I'm doing is I'm using regular traditional gouache, which is water-based. And of course, you could reactivate this layer while painting on top of it, but it works. In this case, I'm using a very, very liquid background. You can tell with the amount of water I'm using here. And my plan is to increase the consistency as I am layering. And also, I know it will be always the same kind of color, so this bluish purplish something. So it doesn't really matter if I reactivate the layer below. But you could also use an acrylic background. Uh, if you want to keep your drawing visible, it would be better to use a very liquid uh, mix of acrylic as well. Regarding the fixative between the layers, yes, you could do that with a spray that is made for soft pastel, for example, with a very thin layer of it. But my advice would be to be more cohesive with your brush strokes. Picking up the layer below comes when you rub the layer. If you apply a single brush stroke of paint on top of it, it won't move. And I have a video about that that I link above. Well, this is a good question because mixing gouache, which is a water-based medium with acrylic painting, because acrylic gouache is just acrylic. It's also water-based, but there are some chemicals involved and well, it's possible. Yes, of course you can mix if you have very specific colors in one brand and not in another, you can mix them. But I wouldn't bet on the durability of it. And I think it would get to very strange chemicals reactions. So my advice would be not to do it if you plan to sell your art. If it's just for having fun in a sketchbook, that's fine. You can do whatever you want because durability is not an issue here. Framing gouache. All right, so um, the vast majority of what I'm painting with gouache is inside sketchbooks, so this doesn't really apply. But I do have a bunch of them hanging on my wall, and I have two ways to do it. Either I am hanging them in a frame behind a glass, because that's the best way to protect it from dust, or I will be using a wax medium varnish. That's possible, but I feel it can also catch the dust, or you can use a varnish in spray, something that is special for watercolor, for example. You, you can find a lot of it. Um, in any case, if you are using your gouache behind a glass with varnish, any kind, wax or spray, you don't want your gouache to be facing the full sun because colors will fade no matter which kind of varnish you place on it. If you want to protect your gouache, it's from two things, dust and direct sun, direct light, because gouache is fragile and it will fade and some colors will fade very, very quickly, especially pinks. And dust can be an issue depending on where it's hanging. So the easiest way is behind the glass and in the shadow, so to speak. Yeah, we are talking about this exact same palette that is on the screen right now. It's an airtight palette, but the, I would say the locker doesn't make too much noise. It's kind of a small clip when you close it and I wouldn't use pure water or pure liquid inside. I would be concerned that it's really <laughs> getting outside of the palette. It's fine for creamy consistency, but mm, for liquids, mm, not so sure about it. So it's airtight, but I haven't tested it with pure liquid, but I wouldn't be safe to place this in my bag when going plein air, for example. 
Between two painting sessions, I place my airtight palette in the fridge, and this is for two reasons mainly. Well, one reason mainly. It's to protect my gouache from the variations of temperature. Because gouache doesn't really like the heat, and if you let your paint sit on your desk and the sun is heating through the window, you can really get uh, dry gouache inside. And as I said a lot of times, I love gouache in its creamy consistency. I think this is where you get the most of the gouache. So to protect it and make sure it doesn't get hot in any place, I place everything in the fridge. Plus, good thing is you always know where it is. You don't have to look after it in your messy studio, because I confess, I am a messy artist. I get that I have a lot of tubes as well, because I buy a lot of different brands to test them, so I can let you know which one is better. And I have them stored in a large box, and it was it was fine until recently because one tube had a leak and I have this emerald green paint everywhere. So I have to place everything outside of it, clean it and store it uh, in a way that is uh, more convenient to grab the color you want. So I know some people are using clips and hanging their tubes on a wall. Um, I'm too lazy to do that. I don't have enough clips and I'm concerned it will get the heat directly on it. So it's not for me. Maybe a drawer with some kind of boxes inside and you could store them with different colors together. So when you are looking for a yellow, you don't ramble in everything. You just look in the yellow box. I don't know if you have any other idea about it, but let me know in comments. So. That would be interesting to share this. Oh, this is a good question. I love it. Um, well, several things about that. Yes, you can just paint over, but it depends if you want to paint white over black, for example, or the other way around. You cannot just paint over. You need to remove the previous layer that you want to cover and you need maybe to add an intermediate layer of opaque white. And if you want more details about this, I have a complete video that is called how to fix your gouache mistakes. And I really love this video because it's packed with a lot of good information, but it didn't get the love it should deserve. So if you want to be kind and visit this video because she needs love. Thanks! I know it's cool. If you have metallic watercolor, you can be tempted to use it on top of gouache. The problem is uh, there is not enough pigments inside the metallic watercolor. It's meant to be transparent. If you want something opaque, there are a bunch of different brands that are making metallic gouache. I'm thinking especially of Arteza. I know they have a white brands, a white range of different metallic colors. And here I'm using a poster metallic color, which is a gold. Uh, poster is kind of a gouache. I don't want to be too technical about that. And this is opaque, kind of. Uh, as you can tell, if you paint on a contrasting color like blue, you need to use a very thick layer to be opaque. But this is a great accent to your painting. Or you could be using metallic leaf as well, but it's another kind of mess. This question is referring to my free workshop, Feel Your Gouache Sketchbook, and you have the link in the description under the video if you didn't see that. And the question is very interesting because it refers to what kind of colors should I get? Um, in this lesson, I'm using ultramarine blue, which is a warm blue. And if you are using a cool blue, that will be a problem, obviously, because your mixes won't be what they are supposed to be. So what you can do if you don't have the exact color that is asked in any art supplies list, by the way, you can still make a warm blue from the cool one by adding a tiny bit of red. But I mean it a tiny bit. You don't want it to turn purple 
it's better if you keep it very at the minimum amount of red you can get and this this way you can get a warm blue well i must confess i have exactly the same problem than you do i mean i'm using a liner brush which is very thin with a um, very few amount of hair inside so you cannot load it and the hair is very long, so if you load it with creamy consistency, you won't be able to get a thin line. So you have to add more water, and by adding water, you are weakening the pigments, and that's very normal. But uh, your lines are not as strong as they could be. So you could tweak this, and this is what I do if you really want thin lines with strong color. You can still use acrylic markers, and they will be opaque and very thin. And this is a good way to turn around the problem because when you can do it one way, you can do it another way. Best paper for gouache is a personal choice. I like using hot pressed watercolor paper because the grain is very soft. There is not too much texture, just enough so the paint can grip on the paper. If you want, you can use cold press, but you will get a more rough texture and you will have a hard time if you want to go into very small details. Uh, gouache works well also on regular drawing paper. And um, what about the weight of the paper? I like 300 GSM, just because sometimes I'm using a lot of water. But if you are not going too liquid, you can go with 200 GSM, that's really fine. Anyway, you have to test, but gouache is very forgiving with the paper, unlike watercolor where you need really specific papers. Gouache is accepting a lot of substrate, and by the way, you can paint on something else than paper. That can be cardboard, that can be wood, canvas. Just make tries. And that's it for today, FAQ. If you have more questions about gouache, please post them in the comments, and I will make another video with more answers to your questions. Thank you, and see you soon.